Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the November 7th uh, Town Board Budget Meeting uh, and Workshop. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome everyone here tonight. Uh, this will be a, a workshop. You'll have your chance to voice any opinions, suggestions uh, to us during the during the public hearing. Uh, this is basically a, a presentation for those uh, residents in the town and to discuss any further changes that the board might choose to make or deem necessary. So uh, I'm going to start out with our budget overview. It's on page one. You should have it up on the screen there. Yep. Okay, so top line represents the uh, comparison between uh, last year's adopted budget and this year's preliminary budget. And uh, town-wide, uh, the assessment was up about a third of a percentage. And in the part town, which is the town only, <coughs> it was down about uh, three one thousandths of a percentage. And, and all that obviously plays into the uh, taxable uh, numbers and the tax levy. So uh, last year, our property tax levy was $4,096,319. <coughs> This year, it's $4,053,554. Uh, last year represented an 11.8% <coughs> drop from 2018, and that was due, uh, in, in, in for, for the most part, uh, from the formation of Palm Tree and then them succeeding from our town. Uh, this year it was a, a small drop uh, to uh, for, uh, to, to the four million fifty three thousand and change. Uh, in this year's budget, uh, if you need a budget, I think they're up up front. Uh, on on the cover page, you'll see that uh, we have a fund balance appropriation currently of one hundred and seventy five thousand. Last year, we appropriated forty thousand, which obviously is a an increase of a little over four times, which amounts to $135,000 more. Uh, there also may be some more adjustment in that, uh, but uh, that's that's where it's at right now. Uh, so our, our total budget right now, uh, the cost is $13,812,169. That represents a four, a, uh, I'm sorry, 1% increase, I'm sorry, 4.2% increase but when you look back to 2018's budget, it represents a 1% increase because of the loss that we had uh, from, from Palm Tree. So uh, that's, that's basically that uh, with respect to the, to the overview. Anybody on the board have any questions? Okay. Uh, next up, we have pending grants. So right now there's uh, seven pending grants, and there are other grants which are also in the pipeline, but we don't have any uh, concrete answers on them. Uh, th those are being written by our grant writer. So right now we have a Town Hall uh, ADA Improvement CDBG grant, which is for a little over 98, almost $99,000. That application's been submitted, it's been reviewed. It was reviewed during the summer months by uh, the CDBG group. Uh, and it, it looks as though that would be something we would uh, probably have like a 95% chance to get. Uh, the reno renovation of Town Hall, which was awarded, and we'll begin the process of those renovations sometime in the next two weeks. Uh, we had a signing yesterday the contracts with the contractors and there is a pre-construction meeting 
next Wednesday at Town Hall to go over the particulars about it. Uh, I just want to add w w within that uh, those renovations, uh, we have a, an Eagle Scout, A.J. Roberts, who's had a couple of fundraisers, one here, one at Town Hall. He's raised uh, almost $3,000 and he's actually started his project. Uh, it's three flagpoles with uh, some a uh, accent around it. Uh, there's going to be some stone wall and some plantings around it. His birthday's in June, so he had requested that we begin the process so he doesn't get caught in doing it on his birthday and possibly, you know, get disqualified from becoming an Eagle Scout. Oh. It's got to be completed by your his 18th birthday. birthday. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, highway. What's that? So that works for us. Yeah, it worked for us. Uh, you got the footings in already, right? The footings went in for the flagpoles. The sleeves went in. Uh, and right now it, it's obviously cordoned off. Yeah. So uh, with respect to those renovations, uh, they're, they're going to be doing quite a bit of concrete work with uh, sidewalks, uh, uh, entrance areas, and, and the patio area, which is off the main room. We're, we're gonna have a patio there that will uh, <coughs> enable us to, if we do rent it out, or if we wanna use it ourselves, put a tent over it, and there's there's more room there, so uh, so that that's in the works. So the the automation of the senior center doors and the HVAC replacement, we had that on last year's budget, but the total grant at that point was only thirty one thousand dollars. CDBG met with us. Uh, P two E was very instrumental in helping with the process uh, as our legislator, and we were able to up those to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Uh, the reason being, I don't think I don't think CDBG factored in the the absorb or the absorbent cost of the uh, a preliminary wage. Uh, so a prevailing wage. I'm sorry, yeah. pre prevailing wage. Prelim 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 preliminary budget in the prevailing <laughs> in the prevailing wage. So so that's why they were they had some monies left over and they ended up uh, you know putting it to not only ours but a couple other townships and uh, villages got some additional grants uh, the road repaving uh, we spoke about that recently that's a SAM grant for hundred and seventy five thousand dollars which uh, includes uh, the road repa repaving from Gene Drive and the uh, an excavator for highway uh, then there's the renovation of the town clerk's offices, which is another SAM grant for 50 grand. We're waiting approval. Initially, that was 30, and there was, I think, an error in the communication between uh, Assemblyman Brabinek's office and uh, the uh, the approval for it. Originally, it was only 30. Uh, Madam Clerk, Mary Ellen Beams has applied for a, or will be applying, I'm sorry, uh, for a 75,000 file storage grant, which will encompass the back downstairs part of our, our town hall and the storage is there. Uh, Judge Schwartz has applied for a JCAP grant of $11,043. That application has already been submitted. I think that came, uh, came due about two weeks ago. So, a couple things. In the budget overview, uh, we're looking at, at salaries here, and we're basically looking at being kind of flat, although it, it is an increase of uh, $66,000 almost uh, with respect to salaries, uh, and, and we wanted to keep them pretty stable. So if we go to the next slide, You'll see the breakdown of the projected salary totals by department. Uh, if you go through essentially, uh, you know, highway, uh, which encompasses 36% of it, uh, and then everything ranges there from, uh, I think, 2% all the way up to 14% for dial bus. So we kept them stable in 2020. Uh, there's going to be some minor adjustments in it, nothing substantial. But uh, that's uh, that's where we're at with respect to salaries. Anybody have any questions? Okay. And these are some highlights uh, from last year. So 
ironically today, uh, that first item looks like uh, the, the last hours of auditing was done. Uh, they left about 5.10 tonight. Uh, so, I'm sorry, 4.50 tonight, 10 to 5. So uh, it's actually the uh, last year's was the first one to be completed in, in uh, approximately 10 years. There wasn't any, any actual audits done. There was an AUD that was filed with the state. That's basically a simple form. This was a very detailed audit. We did it in 16, 17, and 18. Unfortunately, in 16, two members of the town board refused to sign uh, the, uh, yeah. what's the form? The, the, uh, it's essentially a, a, a clearance form. Uh, for, for fraud. A conflict or? No, it was, it was a clearance form, you know, acknowledging that they don't suspect any fraud or anything. Oh, right, right. And they, they refused to sign it, so that money was essentially spent for naught. Uh, and that was just over $35,000. Uh, this this year, and I know Helen and Roberta can speak to it, the 18 audit was so smooth because we buttoned everything up with 16 and 17. And, and the process was, uh, it was, it was like a sheet of ice as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it went, it went very well. The last two times they were in there, uh, three and four weeks, I think for 16 and about three weeks for 17. And this time, uh, I'm sorry, about two weeks for 17. And this time they were only in there six days. So everything went well with that. Uh, We've developed a, a great relationship with other surrounding towns. Uh, there's a bunch of intermunicipal agreements we have. We have uh, with Blooming Grove for our capital roadway and water main services. We have the town of Warwick uh, for dial -a bus consulting, which will continue for another six months this year. There is an important audit that hasn't been done for dial -a bus uh, in five years, and uh, we felt it would be beneficial to continue that. Uh, we have the Town of Goshen and Town of Wallkill IMAs for dial -a bus services to shuttle people up to Goshen and, and Middletown in case they have to go to the courts or the uh, malls or doctors. Uh, the Town of Woodbury Dog Control Services will continue in 2020. It will be upgraded a little as far as some of the details go. Uh, and the cost, I think, went up about 5%. Uh, we have uh, agreements with the Village of Monroe and the Village of Harriman for grant writing services. And that's all those grants that are currently in the pipeline. Uh, so also at dial -a bus uh, we had the sale of the old buses, which generated over $38,000 in revenue to the town. And one of the old buses is currently being used for community service for a mobile food pantry. And I don't know if you know, but that mobile food pantry is, is pretty neat because if, if there's a need, you basically walk on the bus and they don't give you a bag of goodies. You get to choose whatever you want. Wow. So I, I, it's really good. And, and I know Mr. Trevero and uh, Mr. Patrizzo, uh, who uh, they worked at, I think, uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. They're, they're very grateful uh, for us, uh, you know, working something out with them so that they could use it. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was down there uh, on Saturday, and... Uh, uh, Dave, Dave Washburn is, was uh, down there, and I, you know you, you don't realize how many like they get they collect the surplus pizzas from Villa Positano from other restaurants in town, and then they have like huge commercial freezers that they freeze everything. Yeah. And I, I mean they're they've got some operation there. That's I, funny. I, was, I was really it's surprised funny how uh, when I walked on the bus that day. I said, whoa, you guys got a little supermarket here. Yeah, yeah, like, great. They're yeah. like, yeah, your wife needs some tomatoes for sauce? I said, yeah. no, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was pretty, I mean, it's, it's a shame that that needs there, but boy, they're really, uh, what, what, a, uh, purpose. what a great great thing for the community. Yeah, yep. Uh, so then we had, uh, we had a mechanic in February at, uh, at the highway, and it's a 50-50 it's a split between the highway and dial bus. And the great part about that is the 50% of salary and Benny's cost, we get back from uh, federal monies. So we basically have him in the highway garage, but we're, we're, we're reaping the benefits of federal aid of uh, half his salary and Benny's. Uh, also this year, highway purchased, uh, we had a new highway truck that was purchased. Uh, it has a wing plow 
It's a Western Star. That'll obviously help maintain our roads better. The only hitch with that is we ordered this truck in August of last year. We were told it was coming in January. Then we were told it was coming in March. Uh, I had uh, called, the, called the ban, so we were paying interest on this from February through now. So uh, John and I got together and uh, we, uh, we, we explained to the sales rep, you know, this isn't gonna fly, you're gonna have to reimburse us for the monies because it was your fault in, uh, regarding the delay of the truck. So they've reimbursed us for the monies and, and John actually hit them up for a, an additional warranty and they were kind enough to you know, say, yeah, we, we probably should do that. So, so we have a, an additional three year warranty uh, John understands it. Well, George and John understand it uh, much better, but it's got to do with electronics and, and the engine as well. So, so that was something that was uh, appreciated. Uh, we completed the permanent road improvements uh, up on Lake Region Boulevard and School Road, and we are filing the final paperwork with respect to those grants, which will come back to us for about $400,000. That's a New York State Capital Assistance Program for Transportation and Infrastructure. Uh, our revenue stream from the Trooper Barracks has returned thanks to the uh, efforts of Councilman Mike McGinn. Uh, we received 2018's full rent and we also have received 2019 through October or? Yes. Yeah, through October, okay. Uh, we rented the former town hall at 11 Stage Road to the uh, Etzkayim congregation. They've made some pretty, uh, pretty nice major improvements in there, and it'll also bring us uh, some uh, additional revenue. Uh, that, that'll be about uh, $18,000. Uh, it's actually a license agreement. It's not a rental agreement, just to clarify that. Uh, we have in the upstairs offices, uh, which had to have some... Uh, pretty intensive renovations done in there between sheet rock painting, new floor, uh, touching up of some areas. Uh, we've completed about 80% of that. We've done it. We did everything in house. We saved quite a bit of money by doing it that way. Uh, our maintenance staff of Elijah, Victor, and Webster have, have done an, an outstanding job there, and, and they're spot on in everything they do. Uh, the only things that remain to be done are pretty much they finished up painting today but I think the only other things are the flooring in the new copy room and the carpet in the new conference room so they, they've been working hard they've been moving uh, furniture uh, we we actually through the surplus of the county we actually picked up probably somewhere in the neighborhood I'd say eight to ten thousand dollars worth of furniture for at no cost uh, you know Webster Victor and myself went up uh, in the spring and there was a, a warehouse filled and a trailer filled. So, so we, 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 got, uh, we got a good, uh, good find there. Uh, Amory Morris here uh, reached out and participated in the Trees for Tribs program, which, supposed, which was supposed to initially happen in, in the spring, but uh, it got pushed back till the fall. Uh, if you drive on West Mombasia, over by Mom, uh, just before Mombasia Lake, uh, and there's those two small lakes around the turn by School Road. You'll see that there's, it looks like there's pipes coming out of the ground. Well, there was about 130 trees uh, and bushes that were planted there. Uh, our entire building department went out and helped out. Uh, Webster and Victor and uh, I think Elijah helped out a little from the maintenance staff. Uh, Amory Morris uh, had a shovel in her hand. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a great, uh, great thing to see. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, you know, a few other people wanted to chip in, but it was just before the Brian Malkin funeral, so we had, we had meetings and things that had to be taken care of. Uh, we introduced uh, mandatory ethics training uh, for all employees and board members, and that's in conjunction with the adoption of the updated code of ethics. Uh, Mike Egan is here. He was very instrumental in handling that. Uh, getting it off the ground and moving it forward. And I think it was a great seminar. It was something that, you know, 
everybody here took, right? Yep. Well, yep. Yes. So uh, it went well, and uh, Mr. Mr. Leventhal, who did it, he's an attorney on Long Island. It's, it's very boring material, but I think he added a great way to present it and presented examples and whatnot. So uh, it went over well. Okay. And finally, uh, as we have said in the past, our goals today moving forward are the same, fiscal responsibility, accountability, and uh, best practices uh, for the benefit of our taxpayers. Uh, and all this equates to enhanced and uncompromised services for the residents and the taxpayers uh, in the town of Monroe. So with that said, uh, the board has the budget before them. budget from uh, three weeks ago or two weeks ago uh, represented a over a 7% increase in both the village and the town. Uh, Roberta, Helen, and myself, and, and they have worked well past four o'clock on many days, have got it down to 0.69% uh, increase in the village for a uh, home and down to 2.58% for a home outside the village in the town. Uh, there are some more cuts that will happen. Uh, I will tell you that that lighting number is high and I'm just waiting for the final numbers from real term and to see the offset in what uh, the cost of it is and the savings will be so 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 that number will will go down uh and there are some other numbers actually with, with within the budget that that we still need to address uh, and go over some of them concerning salaries and some of them with respect to insurances uh and and i don't know if you want to give the one example for the insurance for work with workman's comp for the workers comp yeah because we had a good reading so the our rating went down, so we could save about ten thousand dollars over the prior year. Pull your microphone in a little bit, Roberta, so we can hear you. Okay. So if you didn't hear, Roberta said we could save about ten thousand dollars because of our rating. Uh, and and speaking of ratings, uh, the, the town really hasn't had a a, a bond uh, rating, uh, and that's because they never took out bonds. Uh, and you know, I, I kind of did a little ten-year history. Uh, Helen was kind enough to, to do the groundwork to pull out the numbers for the ten-year history. And and in the past, uh, there's been uh, an excessive amount of fund balance that was used to to fund the budget. Uh, I, I'm personally not a believer in that. I know you have to offset it with some of it, but there there were there were years where it was uh, above five hundred and Fifteen and five hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and and you can't be funding your day-to-day -day operational expenses with fund balance. It's just it's just not going to work out, and it's going to kill you in the future. And and what happened was there was a two-year period where the garbage was taken out of the budget and put below the budget, so it didn't affect the tax cap, which was wrong. Uh, we had opinions from different attorneys and different townships, nobody ever did it that they knew of. Uh, unfortunately, it was done. So essentially what happened, you, it made the budget look like you were getting decreases, but when you factored in the garbage, there wasn't, wasn't much of a decrease. In fact, there was more of an increase. Uh, and that was corrected in 18, uh, for the 18 year. So, so there was two years where there were substantial negatives uh, for the budget, I think it was 16 and 17, right? And let me just. So, for example, in 2012, 520,000 was used for fund balance, and 13, 215, and 14, 160. In 15, uh, 584,000. In 16, uh, 235, I think I skipped over, uh, 
in 17, uh, 460. In 18, 285. And then in last year, there was uh, we used $40,000, and that was with the the loss of 27% uh, 20 of our taxable value. So we're headed in the right direction. We think we have everything on track. Uh, the town board has been very supportive in, in everything we've been doing. Uh, this year, uh, right now, we're looking at about using $170,000 uh, in the fund balance. And, and that's what's, what's got us to, to where we are today. So I don't, I don't know if anybody has any questions, concerns. Mary? No. Oh. Sal? I, I want to go Christmas shopping with you. <laughs> no, it's no, you go, you go Christmas shopping with my wife. Don't go with me. <laughs> Mike? No, I'm good. Rick? Rick? Oh, oh, oh okay. No, Rick, Rick, Rick had, a, uh, had to make an airport run, so I know he's going to be uh, hopefully here at 7. So just a, just a couple of quick overviews. So with respect to our, our revenues uh, in the A fund, uh, they're up about 200 and, uh, no, yeah, 200 and, and yeah, a little over uh, about three, three, four, a little over three forty. Those are the revenue. What the revenues are up in the A fund, uh, and and also if, if you compare uh, year to date numbers uh, through the end of October, uh, we're looking at being under a budget by somewhere in the neighborhood of about four hundred thousand uh, dollars. So. So that's great. Uh, we, we, we've kind of issued a, uh, a note, notice to all departments that any expenditures over 1000 need to be approved by the uh, supervisor's office. Just to keep things where they are, because working with our auditors, uh, we, we can use any of that fund balance we choose to that's left over from this year to pay down some of the debt. Uh, I, I will tell you one of the most important aspects of this budget uh, that caused it to be only this much of a, a decrease and small increase was the all mine situation. Now I, I'm going to say it again because I want to make it clear. I know everyone here probably knows it, but you know I'm getting calls from people who see things on Facebook, which I didn't see, so I don't know what was said, but I get the gist of it. Okay. This was something that was not any one on this board's fault. This was something that we inherited. So that 3.4 million that we had to pay for it was something that was done by the previous highway superintendent for failing to appear before a judge and respond to the judge's order. What happened with that was it caused us to essentially uh, lose our ability to defend ourselves. And it was basically, you can only settle. So there was no choice to go in there and negotiate and say, hey, we had to hire. It was court ordered. Yeah, it was court ordered. We had to hire forensic accountants. We had to hire forensic appraisers. And we had to hire, uh, you know, obviously our, our attorney to, to handle the situation. And due to the fact that this was not reported to the insurance company by anyone back when this started, we had no insurance for it, so we couldn't even pay for it with insurance. So as far as being transparent, ask me any question you want about it, but those are the facts. That's what was done, and that's what we were left with. Uh, and based on the both sides submitting those appraisals and reports, uh, the judge came up with, with that number, and, and we were bound to it. And every day that we didn't close, the interest kept going up. Nine percent. Nine percent per day. And we paid nine percent from 2007, I believe. Yes. So that's why the cost was so exorbitant. And, and we, we did try to reach out of court settlements with yeah. the, with the, uh, uh, with, with the plaintiff. Uh, 
and, and, and believe me, if there was a way we could have, because we knew we were in a bad uh, position from the default judgment that was uh, imposed upon us by the, the lack of action from the previous previous board, as well as the, the highway superintendent's, uh, uh, the former highway superintendent's ref, you know, refusal to respond to the judge's order. So, uh, I mean, we were in a bad position to start out with, I mean, the plus side of this whole thing is we, we have a, a pretty uh, decent piece of land, 22 acre, right? Is that what it is? 22 acres or 20 acres or 21 acres? No, it's, I think it was 44 acres. Is it? Oh, is it that yeah, much? Okay. It was acres. So we, we've got a we've got a piece of land, and uh, right across the street here, and and um, we're gonna try to turn uh, lemons into lemonade with this. So that's that's the plan. What well, tomatoes into tomato sauce? Oh, listen. So just so you know, if you if you go to page eight in the budget, and you look down towards the bottom, there's the the list of the bonds and the notes there, and two hundred sixty four thousand four hundred ninety dollars represent the debt and the in the service that all mine has cost us. So. couple other areas to highlight because people have asked this question. If you go to the supervisor's uh, budget on page two, midway down, okay, you, you, you'll see an, an increase of about $70,000. Well, that increase is represented mostly by the uh, line 2020-1020 and 2020-1030, which used to be in the data processing, processing uh, budget. Which was, which was the A1680. Okay, thank you. I, I know you know the numbers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. So, A, no, yeah, A, A1680 is on page five. five. So you'll notice there's a, a drop in there of a uh, hundred and, no, I'm sorry, not a hundred, seventy, uh, seventy-three thousand. So when, when, when you basically average it out, you're taking seventy-three out of there and then you're taking, you're adding into the supervisors uh, sixty-four, let's say, for argument's sake. So. Plus the fact you're not adding Benny's into the part-time employees uh, salary there, which were, were in there. Although we do have a, uh, we hopefully will have a new full-time employee there sometime in January. So those Benny's will be added in there. We've also, uh, with respect to the uh, Justice Court and, and the Building Department, uh, we've also eliminated overtime there. Uh, overtime in the uh, Justice Court uh, was line 1110, 1050 in the A fund on page two. Uh, that was at, well, Let's put it this way. Two years ago, that was over $35,000. Last year, uh, this year, there's, it, it's minimal. Uh, it's probably gonna be under 1,000. And then if you go to page, If you go to page 10 up top, uh, building inspector, uh, that 9,500 for code enforcement, uh, that's, that's essentially been, uh, been eliminated. Uh, and it's going to be 
done as per the job description rather than uh, if I go out and do code enforcement at off hours, uh, you know, I get paid an hourly rate. That, that, that's no more. Any other questions? I have a question regarding the courts. Judge Schwartz had asked for some overtime uh, the last time she was here. Uh, but we were going to investigate a little bit about the um, the warrants. Okay, so we so, have any update on that? So, so, so here's the deal. I spoke to four municipal supervisors. Nobody is giving overtime. I spoke to the DA, and his question was, what for? And I asked him uh, his suggestion, and that's what I, I would like to give them this evening if they, if they appear, is to do 50 warrants a week, and it'll be taken care of hopefully by uh, mid-February. So, uh, it, it's, I, I, just, I just don't understand the logic there, number one. Number two, the union contract, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that, but their, their contract presently affords them overtime payment at 35 hours and one minute. Name me another business where you get overtime starting at the 35th hour. It's just not, you know, usually it's at 40. So, I, you know, I know when the, um, uh, the court clerk and, and uh, the justice was here uh, at the last meeting, uh, the last budget meeting, they had, had uh, talked about, you know, the sealing of records and, and, and it's our understanding that, that basically it's a matter of uh, vacating those warrants in the system and then the, the, um, the work of sealing records or anything else really falls on the, the police department that issued those warrants or were the cause of those warrants being issued because of, uh, you know, non-appearance or, or whatever it is. So I, I don't, you know, from, from what I see from talking to other people in other municipalities, it does not seem like it's a, a overly uh, labor intensive type process. And uh, so it shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, the, the other thing was that. And, and listen, if it went past January 1st, it's not like, you know, uh, it's, yeah. it's not like the end of the world anyway, because this, this was really just a, a mandate from the DA's office to clear out all these wards uh prior to the um prior to the new uh bail reform restrictions kicking in on january 1st none of these people are coming back and showing up for court that some of them are 15 years old it's 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 not you know the warrants are 15 years old. yeah the not, warrants not are 15 years. yeah no the people are 50 <laughs> years old. no if they were 15 they're 30 now so um no but the the these the, the, there's no there's no you know these are all misdemeanors and, and violation uh, penal law crimes that are not uh, no one's no one's wanted for murder out there that's getting a, a free pass you know so All right there's no other questions the I just the um, on page three uh, legal services mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just looking for the uh, I see that town attorney line is, is blank, so I'm just trying to figure out where else that, that's showing up. Yeah, that's actually, Mike, in the, in the B fund. Because, oh, okay. Um, yeah. Because right. it's, it's, it's not the it's village. Town attorney, it's not village. Right. So if you go to page 9, uh, halfway down the middle of the page, legal and engineering. Legal. Okay. Oh, I got you. I got you. Legal and engineering. Okay. Okay. Just like well, I didn't see it there, I just wanted to make sure we weren't uh, leaving something out that would make us go over the cap or whatever. So, right. oh, w w one other thing that I forgot to mention. So the, the, the rise in the refuge, uh, refuge for uh, garbage, uh, that rise is essentially due to the Sorry. elimination of single stream uh, recycling at the cost it was at uh, that cost is is actually the same as your regular garbage I'm not saying not to recycle it, it, it doesn't matter where you put it
but the cost is exactly the same. And, and that's, uh, that's happened because of uh, essentially China not uh, taking, they're, o they're overburdened plastic. with, yeah. what's that? China won't take plastic, right? Yeah, they won't take anymore. They're overburdened with it, so. And the contract was up, obviously, with the county. So. All right, there's no other questions. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn this budget workshop. Did you did you want to ask if anyone from the public had any comments or? Well, they could speak at the public hearing. Oh, okay. You know, oh, this is just the workshop. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, workshop. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I second their discussion. Go ahead. Anybody from ambulance coming tonight? I believe they are. I sent them emails, so okay. hopefully they are. Call the question. Bring them I. Cardone I. Skankarello I. McGinn I. Okay, so moved. We're going to take a little 10 minute recess till 7.